Welcome to the Global Cycling Network Technology Show. And in case you've been living under a rock and you haven't noticed, the Olympic Games are in full swing and they have been incredible so far. So, pff, I guess we'll have more Olympic hot tech special? Yeah, track special. Mm. Track's underway now. Lovely. First up, let's take a look at last week's poll. So we had two polls last week, actually, whilst I was away. Mm. First one was, in the Olympic Games, should all riders use the same regulation equipment? 47% um, of people said yes, level the playing field, everyone should be on the same kit. 53% of people said no, level the new tech. Quite mm. tightly contested, that poll. So was the next poll as well, actually, right. which was what people thought of the new sun god glasses. 49% um, said hot, 51% said not. So again, divisive, very close. Yeah. Divisive polls. Mm. I'd like to see maybe just one Olympic event that is all the same bikes and regulation equipment. Just one. Just so that that's the, everyone can compete in that one on a level. level. Can't imagine if it like flips the results round all of a sudden. Yeah, that'd be good, doing it? That'd be crazy. Also, we just need to clear this up because last week's show, um, when you guys spoke about Anna Kaisenhofer, we had a bit of a technical issue. We did show a picture of Annemiek van Vluten. Yeah, um, sorry about that. Yeah, how you forgive us, but you know, don't hold it against us forever. Um, incredible ride anyway, wasn't Yes, it? so yeah. to make up for that, here is a picture of Anna Kaisenhofer. Hope you still love us. Right, on to our main talking point this week, which is Olympic track tech. So last week there was the road and mountain bike events, and then this week we've got the track cycling. Oh. Ugh, we literally love track cycling. Yes, though. and it's all about the details and marginal gains. And before you start commenting down below, go, nah, but they're about marginal gains. Just ride your bike. <laughs> well, you're wrong. This is why they're important. In the men's individual time trial last week, okay, Roglic dominated, yeah. destroyed everyone. But the difference between second and fifth place was calculated by Aero Coach to have been just 1.2 watts. <sighs> That's minimal, isn't it? It's, it's incredible. Uh, and it shows that just changing a, a piece of equipment on any one of those riders' setups could have made the difference. So, so you could have leapfrogged from fifth to second place by Simply changing your wheel? Waxing your chain or using a different tyre or any random <laughs> tiny bit of tech uh, that could have wow, that's them. incredible isn't it it is so it, it is important people do need to pay attention to this yes, stuff yes and the winning yes. margins on the track are tiny oh for those of you who are saying oh yeah weight makes more difference than aero well you're wrong on that as well and this is why 1.2 watts that's equivalent to 600 grams in weight which is going to be really difficult to lose in equipment you can't just save 600 grams in the Olympics no. well game. they're going to the people are going to be typing now going yeah when you go to the toilet that makes that much difference well it doesn't i'm sure they've all gone to the toilet yeah before they did their biggest time trial of their lives. Especially Tom Dumoulin. He's learned his lesson. He has learned his lesson. Now, at the time of filming, we are only a few days into the Olympic track events, but already we've seen some cool tech, and one of the first things that break cover was Team GB's narrow pitch chain. Except it didn't. It's, it's been there oh. all along, hiding in plain sight, and it had to be. Because yeah. according to the Olympic regulations, you can only use equipment that has been out since, well, it has to be unveiled in January before the Olympics start. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, he's, he's been using it. He's been it there, they just haven't talked about it, have they? No. Yeah. There has been loads of speculation about this chain, but basically, the pitch of the chain is now 10 millimeters instead of 12.7, which is the traditional half an inch track chain. So the theory behind changing the pitch is that it enables you to use a smaller sprocket at the rear wheel and keep the efficiency, because obviously, just traditionally, when you use a smaller sprocket, you lose some of that chain efficiency. And smaller chain ring as well. And then, yeah, in turn, you can use a smaller chain ring, so it's a bit more aerodynamic, and then it's stiffer again. And uh, the chains are not very cheap. They are certainly pretty pricey. Um, so we've spotted this, what is presumably the commercially available version, and it's on, on a, a brand called Reynolds. And the chain is £450. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of to be expected, though. It is to uh, be expected, <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is the reason uh, that, you know, missing that, not missing that uh, equipment cut-off deadline, that the Aiton Titanium chain ring oh, that yeah. we saw from Aero Coach a few shows back, and also the new Motion Labs chain that we talked about, haven't made it to the Olympics. They didn't meet the deadline, so unfortunately. They've been disallowed. Probably there at Paris, though. Yeah, presumably maybe down to um, COVID delays, like shipping restrictions and stuff like that. Maybe they might have even missed the deadline by a few days. Mm. Mm. 
A big talking point this week in the track cycling is the base bar of Alex Porter's, so the Australian Team Pursuit rider, snapped. So this is a Bastion 3D printed base bar, and effectively it broke at 65 kilometers an hour at the junction with the stem. Yeah. Quite a big crash. A horrible, yes. horrible looking crash. And yeah. that kind of failure and crash is, is probably every cyclist's worst nightmare. Thankfully, yeah. he appears to have escaped any serious injury despite face planting. And at the time of filming the show, it's, it's still unclear as to what caused that component to fail. Now, Bastion make 3D printed components as well as these handlebars. And in fairness to them, they say that when they manufacture these handlebars, they build them to withstand three times the required forces. That's through like industry standardized testing. But it kind of is one of the slight drawbacks of 3D printing is that every single component has the opportunity, opportunity to have a slight variation in it to what was previously made, whereas I guess if you're making a component out of a mold, for example, mm. there's not much opportunity for variation in that. So could be one of the reasons for it, but at the moment we don't know, do we? Yeah, other cool tech we spotted from the pursuit. Uh, the Italian team featuring Filippo Garner were using some rather funky new carbon extensions, oh, yeah. uh, tri bars that have been specially made for them by Dimitris Katsanis. And uh, the, well, the Danes, who, who have been absolutely rapid, the final still hasn't happened at the time of recording this show. Yeah. Uh, but the Danes were using uh, Watchshop Pentaxia cockpits. That's the base bar and the, uh, the extensions as well. Yeah, pretty cool, aren't they? Mm. Literally nearly everybody has those fancy extensions now, don't they? Yeah. Mm. Something else we've spotted, sticking with Team Pursuit, is that there are lots of different riders using lots of different helmets. So what might be a fast helmet for me isn't necessarily going to be a fast one for you. And or I think, you. Yeah, or you. Um, and I think it's maybe the first time we've seen riders in the same Team Pursuit team using different helmets. Yeah, hmm. like we've seen, you know, POC tempers, uh, cask chronos. And Zero era heads. Zero era heads yeah. have all been common sights. Yeah. Uh, but then again, we should also point out that some teams are continuing to use the same helmet throughout. Yeah, it's just a key point that aero helmets are very much specific to riders and your position. Another intriguing story to emerge out of the Olympics has been reported in the Dutch website NOS.nl, where they describe how two uh, founders of a company called KuCycle, Alex Bock and Richard McCainch, claim that the Hope Lotus HBT bike that Team GB are using has nicked yeah. their idea and infringes on a patent which they filed in 2016. And looking at the image of their patent, it is remarkably similar. It is very similar. So apparently Bock and his lawyers are saying that they've looked and the Hope uh, patent that they filed in March was rejected because it was too similar to theirs. Yeah, like, the Q cool cycle. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, crazy. at this stage, we're not sure who stole whose homework, yeah. but uh, rest assured that we're going to get to the bombers and when we find out, we're going to let you know. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss. Remember when we got accused of copying each other in that test? And we were both just rubbish. Yeah, we were equally both equally rubbish. Both equally bad. Mm. Other interesting observations that we've made are that shoe covers are now legal again. So the UCI has has now unbanned something. I didn't know they did that. Yeah, well, don't get too excited though, because as quickly as they can giveth, they can taketh away. And um, I think they've done that with base layers on the track. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The UCI has banned base layers on the track. Yeah. The reason for this, okay, is because if you think back to the Giro d'Italia when Chris Froome won a few years ago, do you remember yeah. Team Sky as they were then, were wearing their fancy Castelli skin suits? And, well first, skin suits came along that had little bumps on the shoulders yeah. and arms. And like this the is, textured surfaces. Yeah, this is to turn the airflow from laminar to turbulent and help keep it attached longer onto bluff bodies. That's the technical thing. Anyway, the UCI didn't like this, so they banned it. So then, Team Ineos came up with this sneaky solution where they would simply wear really thin skin suits and then just put a base layer on that had the bumps underneath. <laughs> yeah. But the bumps would stick through the skin suit. Yeah. I mean, ingenious, right? Yeah. Uh, Everyone loves a loophole, kind of. Not the UCI. Yeah, the UCI don't. So the UCI have banned wearing base layers to try and get around this. Um, Some nations have been saying they've been at a disadvantage because of this, haven't they? Because yeah. it's been sort of only recently introduced. So perhaps the Italians might be at a slight disadvantage. They use Castelli skin suits. But other nations, well, like the Australians, it's a bit weird. because They it, seem to have a base layer on. Yes. <laughs> So the UCI are good at making, but good at banning things. Yeah. They're, they're not that good at enforcing bans. I don't. It's like they've sort of 
banned base layers without thinking through that teams are going to find ways to do it. So apparently now the Australians have a base layer that's sewn into their skin suit. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, the Danes are apparently using base layers as well, and other teams have made a complaint against that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Who knows? Whatever. People will work out a way of bending the rules if they can, <laughs> don't they? It's pretty cool. I, I actually really like the fact that the rule changes make or well, force people to be more innovative. <laughs> yeah. mm. While on the subject of sneaky rule bending, did anyone else notice that the entire Danish men's team pursuit squad seemed to have identical leg injuries on both legs, causing them to wear sort of kineso tape on the front of both of their shins in the Skin exact coloured. same place. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know about you, but it must be a complete coincidence that the placement of this injury and therefore the tape that's helping it happens to be in the perfect place to trip the air from laminar to turbulent flow, causing it to detach longer onto the, the calf of the rider yeah. and then create a smaller wake. It is a pretty impressive coincidence. Isn't Amazing, it? isn't it? Yeah. Amazing, um, I think. I hope their injuries aren't too bad if they've got the tape on. Well, no, their, their injuries healed really quickly because for the next round, they didn't have the tape on. Oh, but then I think they also did then crash. So yeah, I do actually hope that they're all right. Yeah, but they, we know they heal really quickly. Oh. So they'll be fine. Mm. Cool. Right, more hot tech now. And these are some 3D printed cycling shoes that we've spotted. Although we haven't spotted them used at the Olympics, the similar sort of 3D printing and scanning process is being utilized. So these are the Law 1 3D printed shoes. And it uses the company's mobile phone 3D scanning app. It's cool, isn't it? It is cool. So it enables riders to scan your feet. You then send the image to the company and they'll 3D print you some carbon shoes in a sort of skeleton structure. Mm. So. Obviously, it doesn't look particularly comfortable. So to make it comfortable, it has an inner liner, sort of soft fitting. And then also, they're said to have an external shoe cover for if it's cold or you want to improve the aerodynamics. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure they're incredibly comfy being completely customised yes. to the rider, but I can't help but think I've seen them before somewhere, and then I realised and it was Crocs. Oh, now you said that, yeah. yeah. can't see it. Hmm. Um, we should, actually, we should have a poll on this. Yeah. What do you think of the Law 1 3D printed shoes? Do you like them? Do you think they're cool? Or Are they do Crocs? You, do you think they just look a bit like Crocs? <laughs> so head over to the GCN app and um, let us know what you think. I don't think Crocs are very aero either. They're not very aero, but these actually have quite a hefty price tag. Well, Customised right. shoes, $2,000. Oof, that's yeah. a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. Next up, we've got some lube. And Alex, we all know how much you miss it. <laughs> Love lube. Off camera, it's all he talks about all the time. You're gonna love this. Apparently so. It's called Bike Bums Kryptonite Lube. That is its real name, it is real. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been invented by um, an engineer in Sweden and it's got some pretty bold claims attached to it. Yeah, so... He um, reckons it's like the best lube ever. Well, I've got some of these hard facts here, actually. So I'll skim through them. It's uh, hard facts. Yeah, water-based um, kryptonite lube. So it save, uses paraffin-saturated emulsion. Um, says it contains only pure paraffin, natural friction reducers. Um, is li so it's liquid, so it's easy to uh, apply. Repels dirt, water, mud. And kryptonite contains no solvents, toxins, or eco-nasty ingredients. Yes, it's good for the and environment. What's, what's the other thing you got there? It looks like a mince pie. Well, it comes in two forms, either like the liquid lube, yeah. but you, you, you know how to use that. And then also it comes in this. Check this out, this is a wax puck. Go on, use all your strength. Oh, I haven't got Go any. on, go on. There we go. There's a oh, wax is. puck of lube in here. I genuinely thought it was a You melt pie. that, you make it into a liquid, you don't burn it, you put your chain in, coat your oh, waxy like chain. Oh, like a heated, uh, yeah. like ultrasonic like bath. A, yeah. Oh, and, wow. Uh, well, it's pretty cool. I, I mean, there's some videos on the internet that the engineer who's made this has produced mm. where he shows how he tests it against other lubricants. And it's pretty cool. Worth yeah. checking out yeah. if you're interested in lube, which I know you are. I certainly am. Next, we've got a fancy new integrated aero bar and stem from Pro, uh, Pro being Shimano's sort of component subsidiary. And it's called the Pro Vibe Evo. Wow. It replaces the Pro Vibe. Now, what's pretty cool about this is they're sort of ergonomically shaping it and texturing the bar so that it doesn't need to be wrapped in bar tape. Oh. Pro reckons that bar tape, well, adds unnecessary weight and 
it's actually sort of slightly less aero as well. Oh, so wow. you've the, the the drops are specially shaped to incorporate the shifter without tape on. Pretty cool idea. That is really cool. So is that integrated bar and stem? Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is available in a bar width of 38, 40, and 42. So the most common popular sizes. And they weigh 395 grams in a 38 width, 410 grams in a 42, so that's the widest width. And in terms of the stem length available, you've got 105, 115, and 125 millimeter stems. Yeah. Are you impressed? I remember all that. That's good, not yeah. good. Well, oh, oh, thanks. Right, yeah. Thanks very much, mate. Yeah, it means a lot. Next up, we spotted this on Instagram. Best thing ever. Pinarello has made Richard Carapaz some gold Pinarello F frames. Wow. I mean, we spoke about this on the tech show last week, saying, oh, please, Pinarello, you know, They obviously watched the tech show. I know. They definitely didn't come up with this idea themselves, yeah. and they definitely listened to me and Manon. Mm. So the bike so looks cool. incredible. So it's like a chrome gold that goes halfway down the frame and then fades to, to black. I think it's incredible. Oh, it's... Uh, oh. I mean, if you've won a gold medal at the Olympics, come on, you'd have gold everything, wouldn't you? He's only going to get to ride it for three years, but he's going to feel like a baller every yeah. single day of his life for those three years. That's incredible. So up next, we've got some tech which we don't normally talk about on the tech show. We've got some cool BMX tech. Oh, hmm. yes we do. So in terms of this BMX tech, because obviously we're no BMX experts, although haven't you had a little go at BMX? A dabble. So I'm going to have a go at this, uh, this BMX malarkey. I mean... I've not done it before, but I mean, how hard can it really be? What, what, just like the BMX racing, or was it freestyle? Bit, like? bit of freestyle, bit oh, of cool. Anyway, so Bethany Shriver won the gold medal for Great Britain in the BMX race, and she had a prophecy BMX. And something I thought is pretty cool is that we're starting to see BMX riders using the same sort of technology that what we see on the road. So they've got carbon fibre modular frames, we've got carbon fibre wheels, they're starting to use less baggy kit. Mm. So really, they're adopting the marginal gains approach. Yeah, and mm. people often think of BMX as like a street sport, mm. and maybe something that's not quite as athletic or as serious as what the guys and girls are doing on the track. But, uh, speaking to British Cycling, I mean, they've told me that some of the highest power numbers ever recorded are not from track sprinters, but BMX yeah. riders. Yeah. Because that initial force production to get off the line, over 2,000 watts. And they have a really good cadence as well. The cadences yeah. are, are the highest, well, there is like over actually, 200. You do see a little bit of a crossover sometimes with track sprinters and the BMX riders. Mm. Mm, quite interesting. It is, yeah. I want to find out more about the jumpy jumpy freestyle BMX bikes. I'm pretty sure it's not called Jumpy Jumpy. It is, I'm an expert. Yeah, well, you seem to know what you're talking about. No snacks this week, so we're gonna go straight into screw riding upgrades, buy upgrades, where yeah. you submit evidence that you've made to your bike's equipment or cycling lives for the chance to win the ultimate prize, GCM water bottle or bidon if you're French or pretentious. Now, first we need to resolve who won last week's water bottle, uh, and it was between Steve and C, and his custom super painted bike on a budget, oh, versus cool. 70 Charger 500's Azuki gravel bike. And uh, the winner, 67% of the vote, quite comprehensive, Steve and C. Well done, get in contact. Oh, that's, that's quite cool, that. You. Anyway, this week, yeah. we have got Chris Prey. He says, Tim lost his sight eight years ago after cardiac arrest. I needed a fast tandem to attempt a Guinness World Record from west to east here in the UK. A uh, number of customers don't obviously obviously works for a bike shop. A number of customers donated parts, including the super light Cannondale frame. So I've added loads of stuff to build it up and powder coated it red. Wow. That's amazing. That's that's very cool. It's mega, isn't it? Yeah. I'm a big fan of that. I think it looks absolutely great. Um, Look at the size of that disc rotor on the front. They said 203 mil, I think it was. Yeah. Massive, yeah. Well, it's quite a common thing, isn't it? You, you get the, the big hydraulic disc on the front of a yeah. tandem like that. Just to, you have to have a much more powerful brake to yeah. stop the added mass. That's so much but more it looks inertia. cool. And we've got a little picture of them there riding along on it. Yeah. Well, I hope their record attempt was good. Yeah. Good upgrade. Yeah, great upgrade. And great to see that despite his accident, still riding. Mm. Great, thanks. Job. Thanks so much for submitting. So that. who are they up against this week? Well, they're up against John Choinieri. Can you who, never get the names um, right, do you? <laughs> who says that he he 
well, converted a 1999 specialized hard rock classic from an extremely upright hybridish style ride to a full on backup road bike. Wow. So it originally had a three by seven speed on it and a grip, grip twist. Grip oh grip yeah, twist I remember leaders. that. Yep. I remember you could just get all of the gears at once. Yeah, <laughs> I used to have those. Um, and he's you know swapped out all the sort of bike components that were on his hybrid. And he has swatched out for a road group set, road calipers, seven C wheels, 42 drop wow. bars, and he's done a custom paint job of his own design. What do you make of this? Oh, that's quite cool. For a, yeah. It's kind of, we don't normally see this conversion this way. We normally see like a, a gravel bike style. That is the trend at the yeah, moment. Yeah, that's the But this is trend. bucking that trend. It is bucking the trend. It's got a little suspension seat post in there. Yeah, that's going to make all the difference. Um, um, it looks quite cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it's a backup road bike. It's obviously not the first road bike, yeah. but it looks perfectly suitable. The bike looks pretty cool. I like the fact it's custom painted. I like the design on the um, the seat stays. Where I think it's, it's almost like a gravel bike as well, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's got the wider tyres on and it's got the clearance. Nice. Yeah, I'm um, a big fan. It's not down to us, is it? So head over to the GCN app, vote for which one you like the best. Hmm. Time now for the Bike Vault, where you submit pictures of your bikes and we judge them to be either nice or super nice. You can play along at home by voting on all the bikes featured in the GCN app, and you can submit your own too. And what happens if well, we judge them to be super nice? Well, if we judge them to be super nice, the bell gets ringed. And they're in the Bike Vault forever. Right, first up, who have we got this week? Well, last week we had the most super nice bike. We've got to go that first. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so the most super nice bike from last week was this Pinarello Dogma F12. Is that custom painted, that one? Um, I don't think it's custom painted, but it's a custom option from Pinarello. You I don't like see it. many of those. No, I like that colour. Yeah, I do like that colour. Um, pretty cool anyway, so just short of a thousand votes. Wow, pretty cool. Mm. Um, so first up this week, we've got Ginger Slacker. Interesting username with, what have we got? Um, Jamis Sputnik. Do you know what? I think that's super nice. Oh, oh yeah. It's very well presented, very smart. Very well presented. Uh, nice single yeah, speed. Right. Yeah, super nice, yeah. Straight in. Straight in there. Uh, James Little is next with this. His what, what, what the bike atom. What, no, you can't put a nice. bike in. You can't do that. It's nice. got to at least have wheels. Um, okay, next up is Hakonfk. Yeah. Yeah, that was as good as, right. I could, as good as I get with a Dare VSRU. Don't see many of these. What do you make of that? Oh, wow. That's cool. I'll like real what, aero the, the inspired. The clearance looks. By minimal. the um, down tube. <laughs> and, and on the rear. Bit you as wouldn't well. want to ride anywhere gravelly, would you? No. You get a load of stones stuck in there. Um, yeah. But nevertheless, cool bike. Valves lined up. I think we go. I, I'm super nice on that. Yeah, super nice. Yeah. Good job. Uh, next, we've got Doc Small. Yeah. Who has got this Cannondale Cad 3. Ooh. Old school Cannondale, you know? Like it's one of the old made in the USA of A. USA of A. Um, wow, look, you see these. Um, the wheels are CXP 30s, the old school Mavics. Oh, yes. So you know how, how shallow and old school they look now? When I, when I was a kid, I had a set they of were, these. They were deeps. Well, I had a set of these on my road bike, and I used to count them as my aero wheels. I'd be like, oh, I'll put those in, it'll be faster today. Yeah. Well. Our times change. Um, <laughs> it's a brilliant bike, just badly presented. Yeah, I think it's a, a nice. Just a nice. And it's got a brown fork. I don't really like that. Mm. Mm. Uh, Fredo 68. Yeah. Single speed, Cinelli. Although people love it when I say Cinelli. I, I like saying Cinelli. Yeah, but people love it when I say Cinelli, sorry. Okay. I always say it that way and people always moan about it. Mm. Anyway, um, what do you make of it? No, well, it's, it's the nice, wrong way around. It's the wrong way around. Yeah. An, I mean, it's a beautiful frame, isn't it? But it's a nice. Yeah, sorry. Next up, we've got Kenneth's L83 <laughs> with uh, Trek Madone Project One, British oh. Racing Green and Gold. Wow, that is bling, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> check that out. Yeah, that is seriously bling. Okay, With, that's one hell of a bike. Your bike doesn't have to be seriously bling to get in the bike vault, but no. I mean, that's ticking all the boxes, isn't it? That's doing it for me, I've got to say. Oh, super nice. Yeah, super nice. Nice bike. Right, next up is Pizza Thomas Pizza with his Rose Back Road 2019 Ultegra. Oh, oh, I like that. 
Yeah, it's a very clean looking photo. I like it. I like the, the matching bottles and the clean background and everything. It's good. Frank's not aligned. No, not Saddle in Biggie bag, Smalls. Bottles on. I like the nice. sort of stealthy wheels, like no big logos. Mm. Yeah, it's just a nice, sorry. Um, and last up this week, we have this from Ken. He submitted his tri. Wait. <laughs> what? That appears to be a. Th a he submitted a, a it's Thunderbird a, it's plane. It's a Fairchild Republic A10 Thunderbolt, no less, at Colorado Air Base. I, it appears to be... Wow. Wow. I'm, I don't know if you know much about the Thunderbolt, but... It's Fun enough, no, I don't. Incredible, incredible aircraft. First conceived in the early 70s, it yeah. actually has a major emphasis on sort of survivability, in particular of key systems and the pilot contains 540 kilograms of titanium armour to protect the pilot and key wow. aviation. That's amazing, isn't it? That but is that's incredible. Also, it's, it's just it's a workhorse. It's just mainly built around, you know, the main main story is the 30 millimetre six barrel gun that it's built around, which is a tank destroyer. So all that titanium armour, presumably it can be shot and it just carry on. Oh, the survivability is phenomenal. Wow. Yeah, there I think it's a super nice aeroplane. Super nice aeroplane, great job. <laughs> That is it for yeah. this week's Bike Vault, which obviously means it's the end of this week's GCN Tech Show. I would say we've run out of time, but we haven't because time is endless. I keep saying that. Well, it's because it's my favourite way to end the show. Does time even exist? No, I just like ending stuff like it. Um, anyway, if you've got something useful to say, let us know in the comments section down below and keep an eye out on GCN Plus for some cool documentaries that we've got coming up. Hmm.